let's assume that you are going to have a project that will last for three years. So your free cash flow at year zero, which means you need to make an investment of $100 million. And that's why you put it as a negative because this will be a cash outflow. You will pay this money. And then you will receive $40 million at the end of each year for the next three years, which means you receive 40 million at year one, at year two, at year three. So what do you think? Should you make this project or not? Will this project be profitable or not? So one of you could say, okay, I would say that the value creation will be get the summation for all my cash flows, the negative and positive. Negative 100 plus 40 plus 40 plus 40, it will give us 20 million. Therefore, 20 million is positive number, we should accept the project. Is this correct? Definitely not. Why? Because you forgot that we have time value of money. What do I mean by time value of money? A dollar today has a different value than the dollar after one year. A dollar today has a bigger value than a dollar after one year because of inflation and risk premium, because of time value of money. Therefore, we cannot just get the sum. Therefore, in order to be able to compare a dollar today and a dollar after one year, we need to get the present value of all future cash flows. Therefore, using the same example again, we have here a project for three years and at year zero, we will pay $100 million and then we receive a free cash flow of 40 million at the end of each year for the next three years. Our discount rate here for our present value is 9%. The discount rate is also called cost of capital or it's called weighted average cost of capital. And that's why we can use the simple I or COC or WACC, WAC. So what is the present value of single cash flow formula? Our present value is equal to future value divided by one plus I to the power N. Therefore, I have here three cash flows, cash flow at year one, at year two, at year three. Therefore, I need to use this formula three times. So I would say that the present value is equal to 40, which is the cash flow we will receive at year one, divided by one plus an interest rate of 9% to the power one. Plus, I will do the same for the second year. We receive 40 million, divided by one plus 9% to the power two. Plus, I need to do it for the third year. 40 million divided by one plus 9% to the power three. So if you look at this formula, we got all the future cash flow we will receive and we calculated the present value. But did we include the initial investment that we paid? The negative $100 million? We didn't. Therefore, we need to add our initial investment, the cash outflow we paid, which is $100 million that we paid at time zero. Now, therefore, if we add the negative $100 million, now this is called net present value. So what do you mean by net present value? I subtract my initial investment from all the present value of future cash flows. Therefore, if we calculate it, it will give us 1.25 million. What do you mean by 1.25 million? It's bigger than zero. Therefore, we should accept the project. It will give us a value creation. It will create and maximize our wealth. So what is the meaning of 1.25? It means that if we make this project, we will recover what we paid, which is $100 million, and above the $100 million, we will have an extra value, an extra wealth of $1.25 million. Therefore, we could say that our NBV formula is equal to negative, our initial investment, I make it here I0, because this is the initial investment we pay at present, and I put negative because this is a cash outflow, we pay this money, plus the cash flow at year one divided by one plus in straight to the bar one plus the cash flow at year two divided by one plus in straight to the bar two plus the cash flow at year three divided by one plus in straight to the bar three. Which means we could say that our net present value is negative initial investment plus the summation of the present value of all future cash flows. So if we'd like to put it into words, so this means that our net present value is equal to negative our initial investment plus the present value of future cash flows. Now, let's assume that we will have three scenarios. We will change our discount rate, our interest rate, or our cost of capital, or our WAC, to be 9%, 9.7%, and 10%. And we'd like to see if we increase our discount rate, if we increase WAC, what will happen to our net present value? So we already, at WAC 9%, we calculated net present value to be 1.25 million. Therefore, our net present value is bigger than zero, and this will be our decision criteria. 
Therefore, if NBV is bigger than zero, our decision will be accept, reject, or reject the project. We will accept the project. Why? Because this is, will give us value creation. It will increase our wealth. What about at a whack of 9.7%? Let's calculate it. We know that our net present value is equal to negative initial investment plus the summation of the present value of future cash flows. Therefore, I would say that our NBV is equal to negative 100, which is what we paid at year zero. And by the way, the present value of the value today is equal to the same value. Plus, I will receive in year 140 divided by 1 plus 9.7% to the power 1. In year 2, let's get the present value, 40 divided by 1 plus 9.7% to the power 2. In year 3, plus 40 divided by 1 plus 9.7% to the power 3. This will give us 0. Therefore, our NBV at 9.7% WAC will be 0. So, our NBV is equal to 0. Our decision will be we will be indifferent, which means if we make this project, we are not going to have a higher wealth, but at the same time, we're not going to lose. Therefore, some investors will say, okay, we will make the project for other non-monetary benefits, such as having a bigger market share. Other investors will say, no, we're not going to make the project. So we will be indifferent. Why? Because here we have a value maintenance, which means we're not going to add value nor destroy value. Let's go with our third scenario. If we have a discount rate or a whack of 10%, so we will use the same net present value formula. So let's say that at time zero, we have a negative 100 plus the present value of the 40 million at year one, it will be 40 divided by open bracket one plus 10% to the power one plus for the second year, we have 40. So we need to get its present value, which is 40 divided by open bracket one plus 10% close bracket to the power two for year three, we have 40 million and we need to get its present value. So let's say plus 40 divided by open bracket, 1 plus 10% close bracket to the power 3. Once we calculate it, we will get negative 0.53. Therefore, we know that at WAC equal 10%, our net present value will be negative 0.53. So this means that our decision criteria is NBV is lower than zero. What do we mean by NBV is lower than zero? It means that we will never recover our investment. We will lose money. Therefore, shall we accept or reject the project? reject the project. Why? Because this is called value destruction. It will decrease our wealth. It will decrease our money. It will destroy our value. And that's why we shouldn't make this project. So what we need to do now is we need to make a comparison between our WAC and net present value. If you look here, if we increase WAC, what happens to net present value? If WAC increases from 9% to be 9.7% to be 10%, our NPV will decrease from 1.25 million to 0 million to negative 0.53 million. Therefore, we have a negative relationship between WAC or discount rate or cost of capital and net present value. Therefore, if I'd like to draw the relationship between WAC and NBV, it will be downward sloped. So let's draw it here. This is our X axis, which is WAC. And then we have here our Y axis, which is net present value. The point of intersection between the x-axis and the y-axis is zero. Above zero is positive. Below zero is negative. So I will draw here. The relationship is a negative relationship, and that's why I will draw a downward slope. And then let's draw the three scenarios we have. We have a whack of 9%, so I will go upward. It will intersect with our curve at this point, and then it will go horizontally, and it will give us at 9% whack. Our net present value is positive, which is 1.25 million. Then our second scenario, therefore, before we move to the second scenario, what is the rule here? NBV is bigger than zero. It's positive. Then our second scenario, here our WAC is 9.7%, our NBV is zero. Then our third scenario will be at 10%, we will go down, we'll get a negative net present value, which is negative 0.53. So we know that here at a higher WAC, our NBV will be negative it will be lower than zero.